morning and thank you for being here. I'm really pleased to all the authors that are here, but also to the others. And uh, so I just want to start this very long day. And uh, <laughs> um, I know that uh, most of us are from an archaeological or a bioarchaeological background, and this session is actually uh, an idea from archaeologists and bioarchaeologists. So I hope that we can produce some new ideas or, or we have some new uh, arguments or uh, new issues to discuss, uh, especially maybe in future to, uh, to talk with historians in another, in another context. So let's start uh, with the, the question why we are here today. Um, this idea is born especially uh, to um, introduce some uh, the health and the disease, so how these experiences uh, were in the past times, especially in post-classical and uh, early medieval times. And clearly these, both of them are linked with uh, healthcare practices and, um, and clearly, uh, as you'll see during this day, uh, many of us are from different backgrounds, especially from different periods and different areas of Europe. And so I think that there are so many uh, different um, influences from the culture, from the economics, and, but also from the religion that is very important. And it is just a tip note that uh, most of us are from the Christianity world at the moment, and we are discussing about contexts or case studies that came from this um, part of the world, but actually we have some important and very important uh, texts and codex from the Islamic world. So today, at the moment, we are just discussing one part of this very big <laughs> issue. I know that these slides uh, has a lot of information, uh, and uh, just to say, spend a couple of seconds, uh, I'm specialized in the post-classical period. So uh, I've done these slides just thinking to my period, but it's clear that it can be related also to other time periods uh, of our frame period, uh, from post-classical, especially medieval times. And uh, for example, I'm studying the, um, the, the uh, barbaric invasions, we can say, but also the Germanic migrations to the south of Europe. And so in this period, there are so many um, movements of people, and that, that can be linked to moving people not only from different parts of Europe, but also, for example, from the countryside to the cities, because they are safest. And then it's clear that um, cause the, the world, we can say, is changing that moment, that period. Also, for example, the food supply is, is changing. There are many um, necropolises from the north of Italy when there, are, there is a different approach of uh, a different diet from, uh, there is a changing from the seafood plants to minor cineral plants. And it is just a glimpse of uh, all the things that we are going to discuss uh, today. And clearly we have some important, um, we have some important <coughs> events, just like the plague ones, a couple of times at minimum in this, uh, in this time period. And so, um, what we are going to do today is to have an idea of, uh, um, not only from the bioarchaeology point of view, but also from the archaeology point of view. And we can be um, guided in this path thanks to the textual information. And just to say, we can just think that the textual information can give us some opportunities to understand the treatments, uh, the theories, but especially we can have some notes about the people, so um, about the healers or the doctors in this time period, just to um, take a note about it uh, from uh, the laws of the Lombards, the time studying. Uh, we know that there was a, the doc a doctor present uh, in the community because if uh, there was an arguing and if someone lost an eye instead of an hand, that the doctor has to be present just to judge the degree of this lesion. So we know not only from the proper medical treatments and codexes that these people were present in the communities, but also, but also thanks to the many other textual information. And so now just to go ahead, I, I want to spend a couple of minutes 
talking about uh, these two very important terms, so about disability and about care. So for the disability, we uh, clearly had help, help from the World Health Organization uh, site work, and uh, clearly there are different degree of the disability. So we have impairment in the body, but then a major degree can be considered as a impairment in doing activities and clearly the impairment on menomations that are very um, they, they very uh, influence a person's life um, and in the end we have to say as some case studies that are reported today injuries or for example disease can happen at a certain point in the life course so, and here there are some different aspects about the care because we have basic care uh, if you just need some water, if you need the food supply, or you need maybe an advanced care, and then in this case maybe there can be a surgery um, in ter um, helps uh, help. And then uh, obviously there is a different time period, so there is could be a short period, and then this people is okay, is fine, and can go ahead with his or her life, or maybe she or he is died. So um, there is a different uh, frame for the period, for the short and for the long period. Um, and uh, clearly there are then, um, the care can be visible and known, or, or invisible and unknown. As I uh, introduced, introduced before, there are, um, we are in the Christianity moment, so we, in the Christianity uh, points of view now to uh, afford this process. And uh, it's clear that from thanks to the textual information that there are some uh, <coughs> monastic orders, for example, the Benedictines, that uh, look after the, um, the care not only of impaired people, but also for ill people, uh, creating some places to take care of them. And here there are just a couple of examples from these images from these pictures that I like a lot because here there is um, maybe in, um, um, in that one, in the upper one we can't see very well but we will see better in a couple of seconds uh, there are some examples of cooperation, not only of uh, healers or doctors, we can say, but with the uh, blacksmiths. So they have a cooperation to build these kinds of support just to help ill people. And so the questions that can maybe arise during, um, during this uh, session can try to answer to how we can broaden the limits of this uh, disability in the past and how the care was, uh, the approaching of care and <coughs> how, how much is important from this point of view, from this period, to have so much textual information. Um, and clearly, these uh, new perspectives can help us to have some new perspective, perspectives in past lives. Um, I know that this slide is full as well, but I like it very much, because as I said in the first part, we are archaeologists and bioarchaeologists, so it depends from which are our background and which is the question that we have at the moment that we start to study a skeleton instead of an entire skeletal collection. So if we want to have a glimpse of the pathologies that a person can have, uh, we look at the osteobiography, so we start with the paleopathological assessment, but if we want to know how this person uh, really had the relationship with uh, his families and his relatives uh, into his community, we have to look at the archaeological context. So, for example, it's very interesting to see where these people were buried into the necropolises or in the cemeteries. And in this way, the written sources that are not just the written, the proper written part, but also the images can help us to understand how deep was the medicine uh, knowledge. And, uh, and especially sometimes it's very um, common to find, for example, in the codexes, at the beginning of the codexes, some say, especially for the saints' biographies, uh, where there is the saint that just look at uh, an ill person and how he helps uh, the, the ill person in that moment. Um, and here there are some studies. Uh, so from the first one is that they are introduced before. So from the case study from an amputation 
and uh, the, um, the method, the iron support. So here uh, we have again the cooperation between doctor and healer and, uh, and the blacksmith, as well as in the second case there is a proper support for a forearm amputation. And the last case is a case that we have studied uh, all together with Marianne and with others uh, of our lab. And um, studying uh, the, the, all of these three cases, there is just um, I can say a glimpse of it, but it's clear that there are some others, many others works, as I've introduced here briefly, that has a method um, stronger methodology to afford this uh, this kind of study. And uh, uh, just because I already said that we have studied, we have started to study the the last case, we had the intention to dip this one, and how we can do that. Uh, we have tried to have, uh, we, we have introduced uh, uh, not only this section that could be very helpful for all of us, but uh, mm, there is also a project that is running in uh, Sapienza now, and uh, we are in front of uh, an important uh, um, moment because uh, we had to decide how we can manage with all this information. And so we have not only the archaeological, by archaeological points of view, but for example, the history of the medicine, but also the ethics is very important to afford in this, uh, uh, in this path. Um, so, just to say a couple of things about today, this is the first part, so the mor in the morning first part, uh, there is an uh, um, introduction and there are some papers that are very uh, introductive to our uh, case studies that we have in the afternoon. And there are some case studies uh, from many of you, and they are with different approaches. Then I invite you to see the two posters from this session, and um, I, I hope that you can have uh, time to do this. And uh, clearly, all of, our, all of you are invited to the final uh, discussion. Um, so the aims for this day are two. The first one, basically two, then maybe more. Uh, the first one is to find a key to <coughs> read this time period, this very long time period with so many information. And the second one is maybe to create a network among us just to be in connection for future um, maybe other congresses or if we want just to keep in touch to, to may maybe if you have new case studies, we can just compare them and, and have ideas together. And here I will just spend a second saying that a couple of um, editors are interested in this session. So I invite all the authors and I'm telling them that very soon they're going to be contacted. And uh, we have uh, a couple of uh, uh, ideas with uh, a couple of uh, options from Spring uh, and Brepols. So, uh, but we are anyway open to any other your suggestions and ideas that you can have during this day, but also very soon in next days or months. I want to thank so much all of you because you are from all over the world <laughs> and we, how we will see today. And especially thanks to my co-organizers because they were so helpful and very encouraging me in doing this. Thank you. <laughs>